Hey everybody, Colton Tackett on Sonic and OK Kid Fanatic 2020 here, and oh boy, we have another Chevrolet audio cassette. What more could you expect? So anyway, this is going to be on another 1994 Chevrolet cassette, and this is on the 1994 Chevrolet as Blazer. Now, you've seen the video on, you know, the, you know, the 1995 Chevrolet Blazer, which, you know, it's a different one, you know. I did that back in June of 2019. If you want to check that out, if you want to find that playlist of Chevrolet audio cassette videos, if you want to find that playlist, go check out my channel, find the playlist, and then find the playlist with the Chevrolet audio cassette videos. So anyway, um, about the cassette, I've not played this yet, but I'm going to try to play it for all of you. If it if it's too loud, I'm going to try to turn it down. But anyway, um, we're going to try to play this for all of you. So anyway, we're going to play side one, which is the introduction to the vehicle. So, um, about it, um, you know what, C give me a second, I have to do something first. Alright, I'm back now. <clears throat> Not only did I have to look at the tape, but, um, <clears throat> I also had to, like, try to put the tape in. I mean, uh, I'm not sure if it's going to try it out. I mean, I'll try to play it, but, you know, um, about this tape... This was from the same seller that had the, you know, the 1995 Chevrolet Tahoe cassette. So I'm, I'm going to try to play the tape for all of you and see how it sounds. So I've got the tape in. Um, we're going to play it. So um, try playing it. Yeah. Three, two, one. There's something sticking out on the tape, but at least it's not going to have problems. So let's play it. It actually faded in this time. Congratulations on the purchase of your new Chevrolet S Blazer. This audio presentation provides information on the operation of selected Blazer standard equipment and accessories. It also offers some helpful tips for a Blazer owner. Part two. The program offers tips on the operation of the special options you may have purchased and four-wheel drive applications as well as information and cautions to consider when trailering with your Blazer. This presentation calls out only a few of the operational features of your new Blazer. Complete and detailed information can be found in your owner's manual, which you should read and keep in your vehicle. In order to gain maximum benefit from this audio presentation, we suggest that you listen to it in your new Blazer. To help you enhance the future performance and economy of your Blazer, let's go over a few tips to follow during the break-in period. First, we recommend that you limit your speed during the first 500 miles to a maximum of 55 miles per hour, and be sure to vary your speed during this break-in period. This procedure allows many of the engine components to seat correctly for future performance. Second, avoid full throttle starts, and whenever possible, hard stops especially during the first 200 miles of driving. Your new Blazer is equipped with a four-wheel anti-lock brake system, or ABS for short. Anti-lock brake systems are designed to minimize lockup during braking by automatically modulating brake pressure. So don't be alarmed if you feel a pulsing of the brake pedal during a brake application that would cause the wheels to stop rolling. This is the ABS system working to help you maintain control of your Blazer. And when you start your blazer and begin to drive away, don't be alarmed when you momentarily hear a clicking noise or the sound of an electric motor. This is just the ABS system testing itself. Now, let's look at your instrument cluster, as it contains several warning and indicator lights which you should always monitor. When you turn the ignition to the start position, all your warning and indicator lights will briefly illuminate. This is simply a bulb and system check. After a few seconds, all the lights should go out. If a light remains illuminated, it could mean a system malfunction. Your anti-lock and conventional brake systems have two lights that represent their operating status, an anti-lock light and a brake warning light. The anti-lock light may remain on for up to four or five seconds when you start your vehicle. This is normal. If this light remains illuminated or comes on again while driving, the anti-lock feature of the braking system may not be working correctly. The anti-lock light only applies to the anti-lock feature of your brake system. 
If this light is illuminated, you still have conventional brakes. It is only the anti-lock feature which may not be operational. If this is the case, see your Chevrolet dealer for a system check. If the brake warning light remains illuminated or comes on while driving, it could indicate a possible malfunction of the conventional braking system. If this occurs, carefully pull off the road at the first safe opportunity and use caution since it may take longer to stop. The brake light also illuminates if the parking brake is not fully released. If the brake light is illuminated, check to see that your parking brake is fully released. If the light remains illuminated, see your Chevrolet service department as soon as possible. The service engine soon light reflects the condition of your Blazer's computer command control system. If this light comes on intermittently or continuously while driving, your truck's engine computer has detected a fault in the components or wiring of the computer command control system. If this happens, your Blazer can be driven in most cases. However, you should visit an authorized Chevrolet service department as soon as possible to have the computer command control system checked out. You should pay particular attention to the oil pressure, voltmeter, and coolant temperature gauges. Operating your Blazer with any of these gauges reading excessively high or low could damage your engine or engine components. The trip odometer records your mileage for either record keeping or monitoring fuel economy. With the standard instrument cluster, press the button in the speedometer face to reset the trip odometer. With the digital instrument cluster, press the trip button and then the reset button to begin a new mileage measurement interval. In addition, with the digital instrument cluster, you can alternate the mileage readings between the total miles driven on your vehicle or the trip mileage by pushing the trip button. By pushing the EM button on the digital instrument cluster, you can display all your instrument cluster readouts in either English or metric settings. With the digital instrument cluster, the panel display has a tachometer. As a special note, operating the engine with the tachometer reading in the color-coded high-speed area could lead to serious engine damage. Now we'd like to offer some fuel recommendations and starting tips. The fuel gauge reflects the approximate level of fuel in your Blazer's 20-gallon fuel tank. If you have the enhanced 4.3-liter engine, it's been designed to achieve maximum power by taking full advantage of the higher octane of premium unleaded fuel. However, you can also use regular unleaded fuel for normal performance. Premium unleaded fuel will offer maximum power under conditions where high performance is required, like trailer towing or moving heavy payloads. When you don't have these special needs, regular unleaded fuel will work fine. And regular unleaded fuel also works well for the standard 4.3 liter engine. Be sure the octane rating for fuel you use is at least 87. And if you use a methanol or ethanol fuel blend, be sure to see the owner's manual for proper mixture recommendations. To start your engine, rotate the ignition key to the start position, but don't depress the gas pedal. If you do, you could flood the engine. If the engine doesn't start in three seconds, depress the accelerator pedal to one quarter throttle and turn the key again. If the engine still doesn't start, it may be flooded. Wait about 15 seconds for the starter to cool, then depress the gas pedal to the floor and hold it there while cranking the engine for a maximum of 12 seconds. This should clear the engine if it's flooded. As a special note, don't crank the engine for more than 15 seconds at a time and be sure to wait 15 seconds before trying again. This will help prevent damage to the starter. Section 2 of the owner's manual offers detailed information on starting, while Section 6 offers additional information on fuel, oil, and fluid capacities. The headlights and taillights are operated by pushing the switches to the left of the instrument cluster. High and low beams of the headlights are controlled by pulling the turn signal lever toward you until it clicks, then releasing it. The turn signal lever also controls the operation of the windshield wipers and washers. The delay wipers allow you to vary the time interval between wiper sweeps for as long as 16 seconds. Once the wipers are on, turning the delay control band away from you controls the amount of wiper delay. The closer the wiper control band is to the low position, the more often the wipers will move. The low and high positions provide continuous wiper action, while pushing the paddle on the turn signal lever engages the windshield washers. 
For continual washing, you must push and hold the paddle down. When you release the paddle, the washers will stop. For a single wiping cycle, turn the wiper band toward you to the mist position, then release the band. The wheel above the light switches controls the intensity of the instrument panel lights when the parking lights or headlights are illuminated. Turn the dial to the right to brighten the instrument panel lights. Turning the dial fully to the right will turn the interior lights on. The emergency or hazard warning flashers are controlled by a button underneath the ignition switch. To turn the flashers on, push the button in. To shut them off, pull out on the collar surrounding the button. For your convenience and accessibility, the fuse panel is located beneath the instrument cluster on the driver's side. Refer to section 2 in the owner's manual for additional information on lighting features and controls. Fuse locations are illustrated in section 6. Yep, I remember that. The 5-speed manual transmission with overdrive and the electronic automatic 4-speed overdrive transmission are designed to make your driving as easy as possible. If your Blazer is equipped with a manual transmission, read section 2 of the owner's manual for tips on the operation of your transmission and clutch. As an added benefit, some trucks equipped with manual transmissions feature a computerized shift indicator light in the instrument cluster. When this light is on, shift your transmission to the next higher gear if weather, road, and traffic conditions permit. Following the recommendation of the shift light will provide optimum fuel economy. If your truck is equipped with an automatic transmission, the circle D, overdrive position, allows the transmission to automatically choose the appropriate gear for load and driving conditions, and should be used in most driving situations. The D, drive position, should be used for increased performance when towing a trailer or driving on hilly roads if you notice excessive shifting between gears. The D, drive position, should also be used on slippery surfaces to avoid an unexpected downshift. When road conditions improve, shift back to the circle D, overdrive position. You'll find that the second gear position provides additional power for hill climbing or engine braking. In addition, when the gear selector lever is placed in the second gear position, your S10 will start in second gear. This second gear start will limit the torque to the drive wheels for better use of available traction on slippery surfaces. The first gear position is for maximum engine braking at low speeds, like when you're driving or towing a trailer down a steep hill. It also helps provide maximum engine torque when driving through deep snow or mud. When you leave your truck, place the manual transmission in reverse or the automatic transmission in park, then set the parking brake located to the left of the brake pedal. To disengage the parking brake, use the release of the lower left side of the instrument panel. As a special note, if you have the four-wheel drive system, never leave the transfer case in the neutral position when parked, since the vehicle could roll even though the automatic transmission is in park. Section 4 in your owner's manual offers additional information on parking and leaving your vehicle. Blazers without air conditioning are equipped with easily operated ventilation and heating controls. The system uses a fan switch and two sliding levers. The fan switch, along with air vents in the kick panels, controls the volume of air that flows into the interior. Moving the fan switch to the right increases airflow into the interior, as does pulling on the kick panel vent handles. To decrease airflow, move the fan switch to the left or push on the kick panel vent handles. The left slide lever on the control panel allows you to adjust the temperature of the air flowing into the interior. The right slide lever allows you to select any of the modes indicated to the right of the lever. The vent mode directs outside or outside heated air through the instrument panel outlets. Using this position is helpful for defogging your side windows. The heater mode directs the majority of the air to the lower heater outlets for maximum heating. The defrost mode directs most of the air to the upper defrost outlets. Placing the lever between heat and vent will divert air to both upper and lower outlets. If your blazer is equipped with air conditioning, you'll find additional operating instructions for this system in part two of this program. Your electronically tuned AM or AM FM stereo radio has some very convenient functions like speaker balance and bass and treble adjustments. 
On the AM FM stereo, the seek button allows you to seek out the next available station, while the scan button allows you to briefly sample all of the radio stations available. If while scanning you find a station you enjoy, quickly tap the scan button again to lock that station in. To preset AM and FM radio stations, first find a favorite station by using the tuning knob or seek and scan controls. To lock in that station, press the set button and within five seconds, one of the numbered buttons. If you wish to preset more than four AM or FM stations, you can combine the numbered buttons. So if you push two adjacent buttons simultaneously, such as buttons one and two, two and three, or three and four, you'll preset another station for a maximum total of seven. To set your electronic clock, you must use the set, seek, and scan buttons with the AM FM stereo radio or the set hour and minute buttons with the AM radio. When you push the set button, a set indicator light will illuminate. Within five seconds, press the scan or hour button to set the correct hour. By pressing the set button again within five seconds, you can use the seek or minute button to set the minutes. If you plan on using your blazer for transporting cargo, be sure to secure all of the items in your vehicle prior to driving. Cargo weight in the rear area of the vehicle should be located as far forward as possible. And don't pile cargo or luggage higher than the seat backs. If you need to tow your blazer, see section 5 in the owner's manual. When it comes to maintenance of your new blazer, you need to keep in mind that different driving situations require differently scheduled service intervals. For example, if the majority of your driving is on the highway, where the engine is running at normal operating temperature and there's minimal stop-and-go driving, you can follow maintenance schedule 2 in your owner's manual. On the other hand, if you frequently use your blazer for short trips, towing a trailer, driving in cold or dusty conditions, or do a lot of stop-and-go driving, you'll need to follow maintenance schedule 1. Both of these schedules are found in section 7 of your owner's manual. And while we're on the subject of maintenance, you need to know that it's a good idea to check the engine oil level every time you put fuel in your blazer, preferably when the oil is warm. For more detailed information on checking your oil, using the correct weight or viscosity of oil, inspecting the coolant, washer and transmission fluid levels, along with other self-maintenance procedures, read sections 6 and 7 in the owner's manual. On all blazers, the jack is located behind a cover at the left rear interior of the vehicle. However, your spare tire can be located in one of three places. On the floor at the rear of the vehicle, on the left rear of the vehicle inside the cargo area, or on the optional outside mounting unit. Every so often, be sure to check the pressure in your spare tire. And be sure to read section 5 of the owner's manual for the operation of your jack and the correct procedures to remove or replace a tire. Your vehicle has many other standard features designed to make driving a delightful experience. So take some time to explore the interior and exterior of your new Blazer. The literature found in the exclusive Chevy Blazer portfolio contains important information, such as your owner's manual and vehicle warranty information. It also includes tire warranty information and convenient slots for business cards with the names of key contacts at your Chevrolet dealership. If you have any additional questions after reviewing the literature, please call our Customer Assistance Center at 1-800-222-1020. In addition, your vehicle is covered by Chevrolet's 24-hour roadside service by calling 1-800-243-8872 which is the same as 1-800-CHEV-USA. These toll-free phone numbers can be found in Section 8 of your owner's manual. If you call either of these numbers, you'll have access to emergency services like towing, tire changing, locksmith services, and more for as long as you own your Blazer. would like to remind you that part two of this program provides additional information and operational tips about the special options you may have purchased to customize your new truck. It also includes information on the use of child restraint devices.
Looks like that's it. Yep. All right, so that's, that's gonna be it. It's gonna end side one video of this Chevrolet 1994 S Blazer tape. And the next video will be on part two, which is actually side two, which will be on the selected options and features. So see you on the next video. This is Colton Tackett on Sonic and OK KFNX 2020 signing off. Peace out and have a great time.